Hello, welcome to chapter eight. In this chapter, we're going to look at tools that you use in order to make investment decisions for most companies. So for business students, this is perhaps one of the most practical and useful chapters. The tools that I learned in this chapter, uh, I have used it in my um, day-to-day -day work when I was working as a product analyst and a financial analyst um, every single day. Um, so this is, as I said, this is probably the, the one chapter materials that you will find yourself using over and over again. Um, the good news is that the principle we talk about in terms of investment decisions remain the same. So everything that you have learned so far up to this chapter um, can be applied here. So just as a quick review, um, what is capital budgeting? Capital budgeting is a, refers to the process of deciding which project we want to invest in and which project we decide to forego. So when we build, when a company build a capital budget, they are uh, uh, basically deciding which project to fund. It's the term capital refers to long-term investment. So a project that you will consider under capital budgeting is typically a very long-term budget and they cost a lot of money up front. Um, small day-to-day -day routine operation uh, it is not part of capital budgeting. So what are some examples? Uh, if you are, a, for example, a restaurant business, McDonald's, um, starting a new restaurant, opening up a new restaurant will be part of your capital budgeting process. Um, on the other hand, um, if you want to, um, it, if you're replacing a deep fryer in a single restaurant, that is not part of capital budgeting. That's just re replacing a single small piece of equipment. Now, on the other hand, if you're a restaurant owner, if you're an independent restaurant owner, meaning that you only own one restaurant, and you are trying to decide if you want to replace the current oven uh, of, your, of, your, of your restaurant, uh, that can be a capital budgeting problem because as far as your business is concerned, that one oven represents a significant portion of your overall uh, equipment. So everything is on a relative scale. So this is why um, when we say long-term and high initial cost, that is relative to the business. Uh, and the way that we approach capital budgeting is we're comparing the value that is generated by the piece of equipment, the capital investment, um, versus the cost of the investment. Though the question we need to address is, when should we invest in a project? So keep that in mind. Another important principle when we're evaluating projects is to look at, to understand whether a project is, uh, is independent or whether the projects are mutually exclusive. So independent projects, um, as the name imply, they are independent. What that means is that if you decide to accept one project, you have no bearing on your decision on the second project. On the other hand, and what that means is in your decision process, all you need is a minimum cutoff. As long as a project meets that minimum requirement, all projects can, can be accepted. So that's, um, that's important as we look at more practical examples. Uh, on the other hand, projects that are mutually exclusive uh, means that only one of the options can be chosen. A, an example that I, I like to think uh, often used for mutually, mutually exclusive projects uh, are a bookkeeping system. So companies obviously will require bookkeeping software to help it manage its financial records. Uh, but a company doesn't want to have two sets of books. Um, so if you decide on one accounting system, for example, you decide to go with SAP, then you would not choose an alternative system. So uh, when we are working with mutually exclusive projects, in order to, for us to choose the best one, we have to find a way to rank it. In this chapter, we're going to go over more than one method to help us make decisions. And, and those methods or those criteria, um, some criteria are more economically sound than others. So what are some of the, uh, the criteria, uh, good characteristics that we look for in a decision criteria? The first is that you take into time value of money. 
The reason why time value of money is important is because it represents the opportunity cost. Um, when we are looking at whether or not we want to invest in a particular uh, project, we want to keep in mind that we can always use that, some, that money somewhere else. And when we put our money somewhere else, we can earn return on that alternative use. And the time value of money concept or the calculation, take that into account. The discount rate that we use when computing the time value of money represents the opportunity cost. Another characteristic that we want to look for is whether or not the criteria takes into account risk. And that's important because a project could have a high potential return, but if it also carry a high, much higher risk, then we want to take that into account because there's always a trade-off between risk and return. And then finally, the perhaps the most important criteria is whether or not whether or not that particular decision rule or criteria give us information on if we are creating value for the firm. So the remember that the ultimate goal of financial manager and any manager for a firm is to increase the overall value of the firm in the long run. So if we make a decision, we want to know that the decision we make is going to lead to an increase in the long-term value of the firm. The best way to illustrate these different criteria is through an example. So in the next video, we're going to go over a comprehensive example demonstrating how we can apply all these different decision criteria.